what's up everybody uh, it's been a little while since I've put a tutorial up well close to a year um, but uh, the last one that I put up I actually got a lot of questions on it um, which is good you know definitely like questions um, mainly I'm having to do with the holes in the rotor and how it was done um, I know in the video I tried to explain it as best as I could but without actually showing um, showing how it was done I'm sure it was difficult to understand and with the friggin cursor disappearing a few minutes into the video I'm pretty sure that didn't make it any easier um, but at this time I've resolved those issues and what I want to do is though I'm not going to make the entire thing um, I'm going to step by step show you all basically how I did the holes and duplicated it. We're not going to go on the center portion. Um, maybe do that another time. But basically, I'm just going to show how I put the circles in here and how it looked so friggin' pimp. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it then. Um, screw you, Windows. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a polygon cylinder. Yeah, the thing pops right in there, doesn't it? We're going to go ahead and uh, rotate that thing about 90 degrees on Z. And I'm going to basically just make it the same size of... Mm, yeah, we're not rotating on R. That doesn't make sense. Alright, so select the cylinder. We're going to go ahead and scale this thing down just to right about where it needs to be for uh, the rotor I've already made. Um, let's go ahead and put it on a diet as well. Alright, so now that it's nice and thin, next thing we need to do is put in the segments. Now you'll notice the rotor that I made, there's an ungodly amount of segments. Uh, mathematically, the reason I did it the way it is, um, Basically, each one of these holes needs to have two segments, two lines, or yeah, two segments, three lines um, in each way, so we get those eight points that I explained in the last video. Um, so if we have those two, and then we space two, two more, space two, two more, and so on, basically we end up having two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, but we're not going to continue the next line directly on that 15th we need a spacer so I add one more to each side which totaled 16 now for that to go all the way around we needed nine total segments if you'll actually look you'll see there's one row of four two three four five nine um, so we just need to do the math nine times sixteen um, if my math is correct, that comes out to 144. So the subdivision axis, 144, there we go. So now we have all the segments we need. Um, the next step, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all these faces in the middle. We don't need none of this, so we're just going to get rid of it. Um, we still have what we need, which is this external crap. So go ahead and right click go to edge highlight the edge we're going to extrude this and we're going to bring it inwards so I have my extrude key right in here um, you could find yours if you don't have it there I believe it's up here somewhere yeah yeah it's up there um, well, if you're doing this, you obviously know where your extrude button is. Anyways, so I'm going to go ahead and extrude. I don't like using the the point uh, system thing that it comes out with, so I like using just the regular move, scale, and rotate tools. I'm going to go ahead and scale and bring that thing in. Same length we have for the original rotor, right around there looks about good. And there we go. Alright, now you may be wondering, okay, Justin, yeah, that's well and good. Where the hell of our rest of our friggin' segments are? So now that we still have lines selected, go ahead and click on one. Doesn't matter, as long as it's one of these vertical or if you come down around horizontal. After you click it, put the cursor on it again. Um, hold right control and then right click. Hold those all down. This pops up. Now on the bottom left there, edge ring utilities. You want to go ahead and drag the cursor to that. 
now another menu pops up. That's without clicking. You just put it on it, this pops up. Go to edge ring and split. Now that puts a line right in the middle of the line that you originally selected, which is good. Now we have two segments. Now if we go up to poly ring split, this is what we just did. This is the line that we just created. Um, if we take the split type and take, to change it from relative and do multi, you'll see it splits again. So it's in three even pieces. We don't want three even pieces. As I explained earlier, um, we need a certain amount of uh, segments per each hole. Um, here on the let's see here on the uh, the rotor that I've already made, we have the top segment, and then we have a hole which is two, and then another hole that's two, another hole that's two, another two, and then one last one as like a a, a border kind of thing, um, just so we have that extra gap because it looked really silly if it wasn't there. Um, it actually looked pretty shitty. Um, so basically we have one and then two, four, six, eight, and then one more total of ten. So we want ten segments. So we go to the divisions here, click on the box, boom. Now we have ten. Everything's well and good so far. That's exactly what we're looking for. All right, so at this point we can get rid of this. We're going to go ahead and hide. What do you mean there ain't no object to hide? It's you know, freaking show you. Boom, gone. Yeah, laugh at that. All right, cool. So now we have all we need. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make the smallest amount of work possible. So we're going to go faces, and we only need 16. So let's start down here. Let's go with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So if you ever lose track of how many you have click, uh, selected, um, you can always look up over here on the faces. This shows what you have selected, and we have 16. So that's what we need. Now we're just going to go up here, select these, and then just go ahead and grab everything else as best as you can. Are there easier ways to do this? Yeah, most likely. Do I know them? No, because I'd be showing them. So let's just go with this. Unless you have a better way, and that's always good. You know what? You you always want the quickest way to do this stuff. Can't complain. So now that we have everything that we want, now we just... Is the math there correctly? Nine, eight? Yep, that's right. All right, so now we're going to invert selection. We're not going to do the holes and then the holes. No, we're only going to do it once and then duplicate a special. Less work. Always less work. Um... Let's go up here to modify, or is it edit? Yes. I mean, I saw it here earlier. Invert selection. There we go. I'm sorry. So we invert. We select everything else. Hit delete. We don't want none of that stuff. All right. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a NURBS primitive. We want a circle, circle, circle. It's in there somewhere. Oh, it's hiding. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and rotate him 90 degrees. Basically, the only reason we have this guy is as a reference. Um, this guy is going to show us where we need to put our verts for the holes. So we're going to go in here. Like I said, we want one for a border. Basically, this is what we'll work with right here. This will be the top and bottom because I really don't want to mess with the, the spacing here or with the spacing over... well I'm more concerned with keeping this than this so what we're going to do is now that we have our template so to speak we're going to go to vert and we're going to bring in a bunch of these verts now you can do it like this or you can do them one at a time me I'm going to try to scale these in to see how well they come in and yeah, they didn't come in too bad um, let's pull him in Let's pull him in. Let's go ahead and you know it's it doesn't need to be perfect. You know it just takes practice. Um, get him as close as that line as possible, and you're good. Um, at this point, you can go ahead and click the face, delete them. Oh, wrong button. Delete. If you go back to object mode, hit through to smooth, there's your circle. Again, you can move those points around to make it a lot more flush. You're good to go. So basically, we will put one of those there, another one right around here, three and four. Okay, hold on. Let's bring up the other one because 
And that seems a little small. Where'd you go? Display. Show last hidden. Okay, because it's a little wider. Okay. Um, so basically, that's how we do the circle. Um, the next thing we're going to do is duplicate special. Now, I'm not going to do each individual circle. We're not going to worry about that. Um, now that you have an idea of how it's done, you know, go ahead and have a blast. Um, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this and it's going to GTFO. We're going to grab this and I'm going to show you how we, you know, duplicate special. I've done this in, I think, uh, my weighted companion cube tutorial, but it's always good to get a refresher. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate special. Now I already have the what we need here, but I'm going to run it by, uh, run it by you guys so you know exactly where my head was when I thought of all this. Um, basically, we need since we had uh, nine different uh, rows of the four circles, um, we already have one, so we technically only need eight more in order to complete the circle. The pivot point's already set at the center because we just deleted the faces, we didn't delete the entire object as a whole. So the pivot point's still going to be where it was, that's good. It's exactly what we want. Um, so when we do the math here, basically we're going to be rotating on this axis, on the x axis, by 40 degrees. So basically each one that it gives us, it'll, be, it'll say, okay, you want eight copies, 40 degrees a piece. So every 40 degrees, it'll give me another piece. 40 degrees, another piece. 40 degrees, another piece. So if we go ahead and apply, boom. There we go. Um, close that up. So now you'll see we have all the points. Now the next thing we would do is go ahead and select all of these, except for the points that we missed, which would be <laughs> whatever points those were. We didn't grab those, but again, those aren't needed for this. Just so you have the idea of what we did, but yeah. I uh, messed that up. Whatever. Um, we go ahead and highlight everything. Then we're going to combine to put them all into one thing. Now they're still not connected. I mean they are combined, but if you were to say check your borders, where's that? You'll see not connected. It shows, uh, I have it set up so it shows uh, a thicker line where it's not connected. Not a problem. All these verts are practically on top of each other, which is a beautiful thing. So what we need to do is with verts highlighted, go ahead and select everything. And let's go ahead and do it this way. I have the hot key for um, combining verts on my hot bar there, but I'm not going to do it that way. Let's show you. Let's do it the, uh, the old fashioned way. We go down to edit mesh, go to merge. Uh, the threshold, this basically says, okay, how close do you want us to connect verts that are close to each other? the lower the number, um, the closer the verts need to be, and vice versa. So um, this being a very low threshold, this is basically them on top of each other. If we go ahead and merge, you'll notice that those thick lines just disappeared. Now, ev like, you'll see thick lines elsewhere, but be in between each individual piece, they're gone. And that's exactly what we wanted. So for the most part, that's it. I mean, that's how, you know, I did the the rotor, you know, a lot less sloppier, but for the most part, that is how it's done. Um, so, yeah, hopefully uh, you guys grabbed a couple good things out of this. Um, you know, enjoy the heck out of doing these things. Um, I, I try to get them out a, a little bit uh, quicker than a year apart, but uh, the honest truth, I got a new... Uh, I, Got a new job last December, and it's uh, been taking up a lot of my time, but I love the heck out of it, so it's been good times. Um, but I also, you know, lose track of, you know, getting ideas of, of what tutorials to put up. So, again, if you guys have ideas, please put something up in the comments, whatever. Um, you guys uh, got any questions about anything that I have on my page or uh, just uh, have any advice to give me? You know what? I, I'm always looking at growing. So, um, again, um, we're good to go. Everything looks pretty solid here, and really quick, I think I understand what I messed up here. Um, this was supposed to be one more segment down. We messed, I messed up this segment. This is all supposed to be one more segment down. So, yeah, I goofed up, but easy fix. Um, I'm sure you guys uh, can get around that. Again, we're good to go. 
Um, thanks for watching. Uh, any comments, suggestions, whatever you know where to put it. Other than that, have a great day, guys. Good times.